It's Platt, and today we talk donuts? That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is Double Jelly Donuts. Comes to us from the fine folks at Decadent Brewing. Uh, you might remember uh, previously we reviewed a beer by Decadent Brewing. It was called Decadent Delight. It was an imperial stout, and it was a collaboration with uh, Evil Twin Brewing. Uh, this beer itself is actually a quote-unquote collaboration. Uh, it's not a collaboration with another brewery. Apparently, Decadent Brewing's next-door neighbor is Halftime Beverage, which is a big uh, liquor store slash distributor there in uh, the New York area. And so I guess they partnered together on this particular beer. Uh, the brewery itself is located in Mamaronic. Hopefully I'm saying that right, Mamaronic. New York, uh, just outside of New York City in uh, Westchester County. The brewery was founded in 2016. Now, I had forgotten until I'd gotten this beer and did the research again on Decadent that there's just not a lot of information on them. Um, I believe the video uh, where I reviewed Decadent Delight, I think I talked about that. Not a lot, social media, not a lot on their website, kind of sparse. And while, yes, the beer is the focus, um, always these breweries, Need a little story, a little background, something that people kind of latch on to, and there's just not a lot there. Um, one of the things they do talk about is that they are focused on big, bold stouts and locally sourced IPAs. When I talk about locally sourced, I'm talking about the specialty ingredients. Uh, obviously, not a lot of barley fields in the New York City area, but uh, they do try to locally source ingredients where they can, which is kind of cool. Um, that being said, uh, since there's really not a lot to focus on the brewery, I thought we'd talk a little bit about Mamaronic because they have quite a few luminaries from that little town. Uh, first is actor Matt Dillon. Uh, those you might remember in one of the steamier sex scenes in movie history with the great Denise Richards. Good for him. Uh, next we have um, Lou Gehrig, former Hall of Fame baseball player and inventor of the disease. Just kidding on that one. Uh, Next, we have uh, former Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner. If those of you want to know what happened to your tax dollar after the nine, 2009 bailouts, I would email Mr. Geithner. Uh, next, we have a name that might not roll off the tongue, but uh, still quite popular, is Robert Ripley. The uh, Ripley of Ripley's, believe it or not. If you've ever been to the museum or seen the old TV show, they've had a couple of iterations of it, uh, that Ripley there. And last but not least, the great Norman Rockwell. Now, my younger viewers might not know who they are, but if you're my age, 50 and older, you probably remember Norman Rockwell on the Saturday Evening Post. His uh, drawings were always on there, paintings were always on there, and he was a popular artist all the way dating back to the uh, Depression era. So uh, Mamaroni, quite a few celebrities out of there. Uh, real quick, let's touch on some of the beers uh, Decadent uh, brews because they do have a really cool kind of mix and they do kind of push boundaries there. Uh, first is a beer called Pognog, 8.5% ABV double IPA brewed with passion fruit, orange, guava puree. Uh, sounds more like a fruit salad than a beer. Uh, next is one that really uh, got my attention. It was called Go Pop, a 5% ABV cotton candy flavored hard cider. Now, I could have sworn I remember somebody recently brewing with cotton candy. I just can't can't place it right now. Uh, next is just when I read this beer, when I read the label, just made me kind of pop up, and that is Peanut Butter Banana Pancake, a double IPA. Uh, comes in at 9.1%. Pretty big beer, but just hearing those uh, flavors roll off, I just just caught my attention. Uh, I wish the great Elvis Presley was still alive to try it. He loved his uh, peanut butter and banana as much as anybody. And I'm sure he wasn't afraid of a pancake either. Uh, last but not least is a beer called Tiramisu. And when I first heard that, I thought, wow, tar yes, that what a great dessert to base a beer off of. Uh, this is brewed with coffee and chocolate, the two you know, predominant flavors in tiramisu really works well with beers. Uh, this is a 12.5% imperial stout, so it's a pretty big beer. But like I said, when I heard that, I'm like, tiramisu, yes. That, I just, I don't know why I hadn't thought of that before, but I thought, really cool. Well, before we check out this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. So 
So today I thought we would talk, since we're trying a donut beer, I thought we would talk about donut beers. Uh, these type of beers, uh, people have been playing around with them for a while now, but really in the last two or three years, you've just seen it kind of explode on the different varieties. And there's really some cool donut beers out there, so I thought we'd talk about them. Uh, first is Rogue Voodoo Donut Bacon Maple Ale. This is the uh, first donut style beer I tried, 6.5% uh, ABV, came in a pink 22 ounce bo uh, bomber bottle. Uh, I remember hearing about this before I tried it, kind of caused a real little stir and really good beer, it executed real well. I tried it, tastes just like a maple bar with bacon bits sprinkled on top, which I say is a good thing. Uh, really did well. The maple really came through, but you got a little bit of smokiness kind of off the bacon. I don't know if it was a liquid smoke they used, how, how they got it fused, but really, I think, nailed the flavor of a good maple bar, which you would get at a, a donut shop. Next is an interesting little one called uh, Moon River Little Chocolate Donuts. It's a porter beer, and they do something interesting that really caught my attention. They dry donut the beer. Uh, compared to dry hopping a beer. For those of you that homebrew, know that sometimes you'll add hops after the brewing process in fermentation to get more hop flavor, aroma, what have you. Well here, instead of hops, they throw in donuts in the fermenter. Yes, <laughs> let's, let's do that. I thought that was a really cool idea. Uh, next we have Harpoon Dunkin Boston Cream Stout made with real Dunkin Donuts. I don't know if there's any more of a Boston thing than beer and donuts together, Dunkin' Donuts in a beer. Uh, as the kids would say, it's wicked awesome. And last but not least is Petoskey Super Trooper Brown Ale, brewed with uh, Colombian coffee beans and real donuts. Uh, any trooper out there would probably appreciate that combination of beer, donuts, and coffee. Uh, sounds, again, something that you would just want to naturally try. So those are some of the more uh, popular, kind of cooler donut beers out there. Enough talking about donut beers, let's give one a try. All right, this is kind of, uh, kind of raspberry in color. I believe, uh, Kind of a mix of uh, raspberry, blackberries, different uh, berries in there. Let's get her on the nose. Oh, yeah, you kind of get that tart berry around the nose. I think there's a little strawberry in there, too. Let's give her a try. Oh, that is... That's interesting, because on the nose, you get tons of berries. So you're kind of, kind of expecting a sweet punch, but this still has... A little bit of hops in there. The, the hops are noticeable. You don't get it on the nose, but you do pick it up in the aftertaste. Um, this beer's surprisingly kind of not light body, but easier drinking. Uh, you know, for a eight percent double IPA, you weren't. I'm not kind of expecting this, but it goes down kind of easy. Uh, there is sweetness in there, but. There's also a tartness to it, and you still have some hops there, so it's a balanced beer. Um, I don't pick up the donut end of it. Uh, I get the jelly. We don't get the donut. Uh, yeah, you're just... I'm not picking up a ton of malt sweetness. Um, it being a uh, IPA, you're not getting a lot of the dark malts in there that would might provide that. Um, a nice beer, a uh, really nice beer, more more of a jelly beer than I would say jelly donut beer, but surprisingly drinkable, um, well balanced. Um, yeah, almost more of a fruit beer to me. Uh, than anything, but real ni nice beer, though. Right? And actually, again, you wouldn't say this about double IPA, something at 8.5% or this is something I can drink, you know, in the summertime. This Now, I probably wouldn't want to drink a lot of these <laughs> in the summertime, but this is actually something I could drink 
you know, out patio drinking in the summertime. Uh, surprisingly, you know, almost kind of a refreshing beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it'll let YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.